Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating this vertical navigation bar. You can see it right here. We've got rollovers. We're going to create an active state, which the active state is the moment you actually click. And then we also have this little check, well, that is there when you're just looking at the link, uh, that check icon that's going to appear next to visited links. So we're going to create all this and it's all from one image. Let's take a quick look at that image. I'm going to try to buzz through this kind of initial stuff so we can get working in Dreamweaver ASAP. Here on the bridge, I have this uh, image right here, sidebar uh, RO, sidebar rollover. And it's all four of our rollover states. We're only going to be using the top three. The fourth one's just kind of one we can use later for something else if we decide to. Um, but that's there. Uh, anyway, I have set this up, and I'm going to explain further how, uh, or excuse me, when we're in Dreamweaver later on, I'm going to explain exactly how I set this up. But basically, if you can imagine, if this was only going to be one button, it would be 250 pixels wide by 38 pixels tall. And I kind of stacked all of these buttons inside of one document and saved them as one image. That way one image loads. It's, it's what's known as a sprite. So it's multiple images combined into one and then you just position the images to show whatever you want to show. Again, we're gonna cover all of that when we get into Dreamweaver. You're gonna understand exactly how it works uh, in just a few minutes. So that's the image I'm using. Create an image for yourself with just a couple rollovers. Stack them all on top of each other and we'll be ready to rock and roll. So with that in mind, uh, we're going to head over to Dreamweaver. Note, I actually, before I hop into Dreamweaver, we are uh, working here in Internet Explorer, so this navigation bar does work in at least some of the more modern Internet Explorers. Uh, and then we also have it here in Firefox. And I've checked it in a bunch of the other browsers, and we're all good all over the place. So here in Dreamweaver, I want to go ahead and open up an HTML file that um, I obviously have worked in before. Um, just because I want there to be some context around this menu. I don't just want to create a blank menu on a big blank page. So what I have here is an unordered list. And each of these list items, you know, home, clothing, accessories, contact, yada, 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 each of them are linked to live websites out there on the web. So we can test that whole visited link thing and, you know, all of that stuff. So different links for each of our, our links. And uh, we're going to be able to really accurately test the way our menu is going to work. Now, for those of you that don't know what an unordered list is or how to create one, Here's how. I'm just going to create one over here real quick. Uh, basically, you just get your pointer in there, check out the properties panel. We've got unordered list right here, just kind of like a bulleted list. It's going to pull you back over, and you just type your first item, item number one. Uh, hit enter or return, item number two, and enter or return, and three. Uh, what this is doing, if we go to the code view, you can see we have UL, which unordered list. And then within the UL, we have these LI tags. And an LI is simply a list item. So we have all these list items within our UL. This is kind of important to know. We're going to be targeting UL and LI and then A tags, an anchor tag for a link, uh, within UL and LI tags using CSS. All right, so just bear with me. We're going to get this whole thing sorted out. For now, we don't need this, this unordered list here, so I'm going to junk it and go back to design view. See, gone. We do, however, have this unordered list over here. You can see all the bullet points. Uh, the reason you can see the bullet points over, the, over here is because they were hanging to that dark bluish purple color. So what I want to do first is create a CSS file uh, that we're going to link up to this HTML file. Now, if you're already using a CSS file, feel free to just add the code we're about to start writing to your already connected CSS file. However, to keep things simple for this tutorial, I'm going to go to code view here and I'm going to link to a new CSS file. I haven't created the CSS file. You can see I only have this vertnav.css, which is for a different vertical navigation bar. So I want to create a new CSS file first. I'm going to go File, New, and go CSS, Create. Wonderful. Now that we've done this, save it. Control, Shift, or Command, Shift, S. Select Site Root to make sure you're on the site root. And we're going to name this vertnav2. Save. I know, very creative. Go back to the HTML document, and we already are linking to one CSS file right here. So all I'm going to do is just copy this and paste it right below. And I'm going to change here the href, which is basically referencing our CSS file. I'm going to change that to vert nav 2.css. Oops, CSS. There we go. We are now linked up with our vert nav 2.css file. Now that we've done that, we're ready to begin coding. Now, because we have already previewed our site, you can see I've got Internet Explorer open, I've got Firefox open. All I need to do as I make changes here uh, in Dreamweaver is go ahead and refresh the page, and I'm going to see exactly what's going on. Okay, you can see I refreshed it. All that CSS that I had before is gone. We just have our straight up unordered list. Same thing here when I refresh the page. All right, so we know what we're working with, and we know we're going to start seeing some changes. All right. Let's go ahead and start by targeting the li tag within the unordered list. So we're going to say ul, that's our ul tag, remember? And then the li tag is within the ul. 
Now that we've done that, type in open curly bracket, enter return twice, close curly bracket, and then the up arrow key. Tab to indent, and now we're working right in here. The first thing we want to do is get rid of those bullets. So we're going to say list hyphen style colon none. This is saying, hey, take that list style, toss it out the window. We want no list style. Matter of fact, if I go back, look at that. All of the bullet points are gone. Great. We're doing wonderful. Go ahead and uh, add another line, and we're just going to say text hyphen align colon. And right there, the tooltips got our, our, uh, our chosen alignment right there at the top center. And we're going to say semicolon. All right, great. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and save our HTML file, Commander Control S, or excuse me, save our CSS file, Commander Control S. And just go back to our web browser and just refresh. And you can see no bullets, everything is centered. Great. Same thing in Internet Explorer. Beautiful. Back to Dreamweaver. We're going to go back to our CSS file here, and we want to create a new CSS rule. So we're going to say ULLIA. This is targeting the links within the UL and LI tags. I'm going to show you exactly what we're targeting in just a second. For now, create your open curly bracket, enter return twice, close curly bracket, up arrow key, tab key uh, to indent within that. I like to try to keep my code nice and clean uh, at all times. Go back to the HTML file and let's check out that ULLIA thing I was just telling you about. I'm just going to uh, select one of these uh, list items here within our unordered list. And I'm going to choose to switch to code view. Check this out. We have our UL tag, okay, and here's our closing UL tag. That's our entire unordered list right there with all of our links inside of it. Each link is one LI. List item, there's the opening li tag, here's the closing li tag. Now within the li tags we have our a tag. href is simply the location of the link, here's the text that makes up the link, and here's our closing anchor tag. So we're targeting the ul first, then the li within the ul, and then the a within any of those li tags. So it's kind of important that you get to know how you target these tags because it's going to be something you're going to be using a lot as you design with CSS. Uh, and HTML and you know any of the web design you do. Let's hop back to our CSS document and finish uh, doing what I just started. What we want to do with this link is display it as a block level element. Displaying a link as a block level element is going to allow us to click around the link as well as the link to to you know visit the link. So it's not going to restrict your user to having to, to press directly on the text. But the real thing it's going to do is give the illusion that this text is part of a greater button. And you're going to see exactly what I mean in a second. So we're going to say display colon block. We want to display this as a block level element. Hit enter return and we want to set the height of this block because now it's just it's almost like a div is wrapped around our anchor um, although there's not really one there. So we're going to say height colon 38 pixels because 38 by 250 is the size that I created each of those individual buttons within our rollover image. So 38 pixels high is going to be great. And then we're going to go ahead and set the line height to 38 as well. This is going to center our text vertically within our block that we just created. So I'm going to say 38 pixels for that as well. We're going to save this, go back to our HTML file. You can see now we have these blocks with our link sitting right in the middle and we're set. So I'm going to make sure I've saved my CSS file. I'm going to refresh my HTML page out on, on in the web browser and look at this. I get the finger which is telling me this is a clickable link even when I don't roll over the text. That's awesome because now all somebody has to do is roll into the general vicinity of your link. They're going to trigger a rollover. The rollover is going to say, hey, you can click me, you can visit another page, or whatever the user may want to do. So that's really going to be helpful to uh, know that you can do that here in IE as well. Refresh, voila, we're looking great. So next comes the fun part. We're actually going to create the first rollover or the first set of rollovers. This being the rollover when the person actually goes ahead and you know hovers their mouse over your buttons. So we're going to hit enter return a couple times and we're going to say ULLIA colon hover. Now that colon hover is what's known as a pseudo class selector and you know it's just basically saying look when somebody hovers on an anchor tag do something. So we're going to create our open curly bracket, enter return a couple times, close curly bracket, up arrow key tab. We're now within uh, this new rule we created. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and set a background. So we're going to type the word background. And I, now that I just typed the word background, I, I just remembered that I need to drag my image in. I'm going to delete that real quick. We'll get back to that in a second. Top over to bridge. I just want to drag this image into uh, Dreamweaver. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make my bridge window a touch smaller. Make my thumbnails a little smaller. I'm going to drag this guy and drop him right here in the site. You can see that it is sidebar ro.gif. Now, normally I would drag this into my images folder, but for the sake of keeping things simple, we're just going to drop it on the root level of the Dreamweaver site here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type the word background, 
colon. Now with the tooltip that pops up, you can just use your down arrow key, move down to URL because we're linking to an image, hit enter or return. It's gonna pop this up. We're gonna select site root to make sure we're on the root level of our site. Find our image, we got a nice preview. Yep, definitely the image we want. We're gonna hit okay. Now that we've done that, we definitely don't want this image to repeat if there's any reason that the image would repeat. So just to be safe, we're gonna type no repeat and then just a colon. Now that we've done that, we're going to uh, check to see what happens. We're gonna save our CSS file, go back to the HTML file. Doesn't look like anything's changed. Nothing should have changed because you know you can't really test the rollovers right there within a Dreamweaver like that. You need to do some kind of a live preview. So here, check it out. When I roll over my links, we get a nice rollover. Looking good. Same thing here in IE. Great. Let's get back into Dreamweaver, and we have two other states that we want to uh, add code for, that being the active and the visited state of links. So I'm going to go back to my CSS document, and we're going to create two new rules, just like we did the first one. We're going to say UL, LI, A, and let's go with active first. Active, open curly bracket, enter, return, close curly bracket, and then the up arrow key. Now that we're within that style, we're going to go ahead and we're going to attach the background again. So we're going to say background. URL, we kind of know what we're doing here now. And we're gonna go ahead and choose that sidebar. And we're gonna hit OK. Now that we've done that, we're also gonna say no repeat here as well. Colon. Now, we want to change the background position property. So I'm gonna type the word background hyphen position. I like to do this as its own little separate thing so I know anytime I wanna come in and change background position, I don't have to fiddle around with a whole bunch of numbers. And basically all we need to do is set the, you know, the X and Y position of the image. So as far as X side to side positioning, we want it to stay squared up in the center. This image is just 250 pixels wide. It's going to drop right in. But what we want to do is we want to move down 38 pixels. So with that in mind, we're going to say 0 pixels for the X. And then for the Y, we're going to say negative 38 pixels. Move me down 38 pixels or move the image up 38 pixels. So now that we've done that, let's save this guy. Let's check it out online. Reload. Now, right as I click my link, you can see that that rollover flips. All right? That's that active state. The moment you are clicking down, let's check in IE. And you can see same thing happens in IE. Great. So we've done that. Let's go ahead now and set the visited, uh, the visited state. U-L-L-I-A, again, as we've been doing. And this time, just type visited. Open curly bracket, enter, return a couple times, close curly bracket. Get up within that style. And uh, here, again, we're going to attach that background image, background URL, and slide down to our rollover image. Again, no repeat, Col uh, semicolon. And here, for background position, we're going to, again, say 0 pixels for the X. And then for the Y, 38 times 2 would be something like 76. So we're going to say negative 76 pixels. And now, for our visited links, that little check should show up, this image right here. Check it out. Now here in Firefox, I've visited all of these links. They're all kind of sites that I visit uh, pretty frequently. So when I reload this page, we should just see all of these lined with checks because my, my browser says, hey, you already visited all these sites. So you know I'm not going to clear my cache and all that good stuff. There we go. All the checks show up. Internet Explorer is a little bit of a different story. Again, I don't use that very much. So the only thing that's checked here is one that I just clicked before. So let's go ahead and click on the word home. I hope it doesn't take me to a site that, okay, it takes me to my site. That's kind of what I was hoping. All right, so I'm going to go back, and you can see that we now have a check next to that link. It's a visited link. Great, so it's working exactly the way we wanted it to. But check out this little problem we have. Here we roll over all of these links, and our rollover comes up. But Look at the visited links. Now that they're visited, the rollover doesn't come up. That's a bit of a problem. And certainly the rollover's not coming up, neither is the active state. That has to do with the way we position our code in the CSS document. There's a specific order in which you are supposed to work with the, the hover, active, and visited. Hover uh, is actually supposed to come next to last. Active will be last. Hover will be second last. Visited is supposed to come first. So what I just did was I highlighted the code. I'm hitting Command or Control X to cut it. And I'm going to paste it right here above hover. All right. So we've got visited, hover, active. That is the order you want. Now that we've done that, save it. Let's hop back out here. A note here in Firefox, none of them work because, well, they're all visited. So I'm going to reload. 
and now check it out. They all work. Once again, you click, you get your active state, perfect. So the last thing we want to change in Dreamweaver is we just want to go ahead and add some other properties to our uh, link. The actual, we want to change the way the link looks. Uh, right now it's just this ugly blue and you know dark blue with visited, which we can change the color of the visited link. Well, we're probably not going to take the time to do that. We'll probably just change the initial link and that'll kind of stay steady throughout the whole link. So back in Dreamweaver, we want to add a couple lines of code to the UL li a rule that's targeting that anchor tag that text there so we hit enter return once and uh, the first thing we want to do is go ahead whoops and change the fonts we're gonna say font family colon and uh, let's be very original and just go down and grab Arial and we're gonna say semicolon now that we've done that we're gonna say font hyphen uh, height weight and colon and uh, let's go ahead and make this bold and then text decoration we're going to set this to none, and what the text decoration is, is just that simple underline, that annoying little underline that every link gets. We're going to set that to none. That dumps that underline. And last but not least, we're going to give the text a color. Color, and we're going to say pound or hashtag, as some of you like to call it, 333, semicolon. Save the CSS document. Let's reload our page out here. And you can see all of our links have changed, and the same thing with IE. There we go. And just that easily, we have created and styled a CSS vertical navigation bar. Very simple, but we use those uh, the image sprites as our rollover, rollovers, I guess you could say. Um, but it's one image, and you're getting multiple rollovers and visited states out of it. Very, very cool technique. And you can see it's just a small amount of CSS here. Very simple. And uh, that's it. That is a simple vertical navigation bar. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a thing or two. Thank you for sticking around. And uh, if you enjoyed the tutorial, even if you didn't enjoy the tutorial, go check out the site. It's www.tutvid.com. Thanks for watching.